Hello, this is uh, your homework on constructive and destructive plate margins. By the end of it, you'll be drawing annotated and clear diagrams, one for constructive and one for destructive plate margins. First of all, though, if you think back to your last week's homework, which is based around uh, convection currents and learning some of the key words, and you can see the diagram here um, showing the uh, inner core and outer core, and you can show the mantle, and it shows the plate around the outside as well. The diagram also shows here and around here all the convection currents. If you remember, these are the way that the heat is transferred from the inner core through the outer core and out into the mantle. And as a result, the plates on the outside of the Earth, part of the Earth's crust, rests and almost kind of float on top of the uh, mantle which is moving around and it is this movement below which moves the plates. So that was your last week's homework. Now we're going to look on what actually happens on the surface because of this movement underneath the earth. Right, at some places the plate boundary is going to move apart and this is what this simple clear diagram of a constructive margin shows. You can see here, this is the uh, mantle moving, this is the convection currents, and one of them is moving out this way, the other is moving out here, and the two convection currents are therefore moving the plates apart, so one ends up moving that way, and one ends up moving that way, and you get a weakness in between through which the magma can erupt, and you get volcanoes at these constructive plate margins, normally in the middle of an ocean. Now let's have a look at a more detailed diagram of a constructive plate margin. OK, here is another diagram of a constructive plate margin, obviously a lot more detailed this time, and it contains not just the detail, but the order or the sequence of the events and the processes that happen at such a plate margin. It's the order, and it's the processes, and it's the way the processes are linked to the type of earthquakes and volcanoes and land features here that is really key that you will need to know to get a good grade. So I'll just repeat that. So you need to know the detailed processes that go on at a plate margin but also the order in which they happen and how these processes create and affect the landforms at this plate margin. Let me explain. So, uh, as you can see written in the photo, a constructive plate margin is a boundary between two plates that are moving apart. And they're moving apart because of the constructive, uh, sorry, the um, convection currents that are happening underneath the Earth's surface. You can see them marked there um, with the two red arrows at the bottom of the diagram. Now, as these plates move apart, they move apart very slowly, probably about... Um, five centimetres or so a year um, the two plates here are moving apart um, which roughly speaking is the speed that your fingernails would grow at so uh, it is continual but it is slow now um, when they move apart the magma is able to rise slowly to the surface up from the mantle the magma will erupt to the surface of the earth uh, this is also often uh, accompanied by small earthquakes both the earthquakes are small and the volcanic eruptions not violent um, simply because there's not much pressure builds up here. Because the plates are moving apart there's not much tension or squeezing or pressure builds up so the volcan volcanic earthquakes are, are um, normally not violent and the earthquakes are normally quite mild. Now when the magma reaches the surface it cools and solidifies. Firstly obviously on the uh, seabed and it forms new crust or new rock. This is why in fact these plate margins are called constructive because they are constructing, they are building new um, plates, new surface on the earth. So they are called constructive. Now with the new crust being formed at this margin uh, this will build up over time and eventually if there are enough uh, volcanic eruptions or if there's a slightly stronger one this can form islands 
Uh, a lot of Iceland is formed by this, and famously in the 1960s there was an island uh, called Surtsey, which um, almost appeared to to rise up from under the sea, um, uh, almost as if by magic. So, eventually the new rock builds up to form a volcano. Constructive boundaries, as I've said, are normally found under the sea. And this example here is called the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. Um, and you can trace on an atlas a chain of underwater volcanoes which have formed along this plate boundary. Um, what you need to know is the sequence as well. So the plates move away from each other. You need to talk before that in an exam about the uh, convection currents causing these plates to move away. Then the uh, magma uh, rises up from beneath the ground. It'll erupt. It'll form new surface, new land. It'll construct new land around the plate margin on the seabed. And eventually, once this has cooled over time, it'll build up and build up, possibly then making a mountain which will break through the surface of the uh, sea and form a new island. Accompanied with this, you can also get uh, minor earthquakes as well. So this is the description of the task, which I've already mentioned in the previous slides. You need to draw an annotated diagram of constructive plate margin. An annotation is not just descriptive labels, it's also explaining the diagram and making it clearer. You don't need to make it clever in 3D, you can keep it simple if you wish, but it needs necessary nevertheless to be able to clearly show the main processes and the order they occur in. You should also show how these processes create the landforms and the characteristics of the constructive plate margin. So how do the processes and the changes that happen within the earth actually create what is there? And you need to make those links um, to be able to get uh, high grade um, material that you can revise from to get a high grade in the exam. Now this is the second part of the homework, it's just the same part, repeated for destructive rather than constructive plate margins, and again you're going to draw an annotated diagram showing the sequence, the main features, and how the processes, and the sequence of the processes creates the main features and the characteristics of a destructive plate margin. Now the here we have here the f a very simple diagram, like we started the last one with a simple diagram of a destructive plate margin. Um, haven't marked on the convection currents, but you can see that this plate here, there, there's a D on the diagram I've got here, uh, this plate here uh, is moving towards this plate here on the right hand side, across here and this one, so they are moving together, one that way, one that way. And uh, this, although this is a simple one, you can already see some of the main differences, they're moving together, one of them is being forced down underneath the other and uh, we're going to look at all of that in a slightly more detailed diagram on the next slide. Now again this more detailed diagram of a destructive margin is taken from a textbook um, a slightly clearer text thank thankfully in this one and I'm going to talk you through the sequence, what happens why it happens and what this sequence of events causes at a destructive plate margin. So first of all, as we've already said, and is nicely shown by the black arrows on this diagram, uh, you can see that the plates are moving towards each other, one that way, one that way. Now, there is land involved this time already because one of the plates is a continental crust that we looked at, you looked at in your last homework, the continental crust. The other is an oceanic crust. can't see that very clearly on the picture but it's, it's a oceanic crust. Now the oceanic crust if you remember has different characteristics than the continental one and the key characteristic the difference here between the two is that the oceanic crust is of denser material it is heavier it will weigh more per square kilometer cube, uh, cubic kilometer uh, cubic meter it weighs more therefore when the two meet here it is the c oceanic crust which is forced down into the surface and is destroyed. And therefore that's why it's called a destructive plate margin. That's why the Earth doesn't expand because of constructive plate margins, because other parts of the, the, the Earth's surface, um, parts of the surface are being destroyed. Now, two plates move towards each other. The heavier plate is forced down. The continental plate is forced down. This causes a lot of friction here. And this area is called the subduction zone. Now, that's not actually 
uh, mentioned on this diagram, the subduction zone, which is S U B D U C T I O N, subduction. It literally means to be led under, sub, meaning under, like as in submarine. Uh, so this is forced down, and the plate is forced down, and it is melted. There's a huge amount of heat and friction and pressure, which means that the um, original plate is melted and becomes a supply of magma. Now, not only is there an extra supply of magma here, which might help create volcanic eruptions, but because of the pressure of the two plates moving together, this creates a lot of pressure. And the build-up of pressure means a huge amount of earthquakes, sometimes very severe earthquakes, and when these volcanoes erupt, they erupt a lot more violently, as it says here in box 6. Okay, so you get volcanoes, you get earthquakes, but the earthquakes are more severe, the volcanoes are much more violent. The second part of this homework, the task 2, is to draw an annotated diagram of a destructive plate margin. I have simply copied and pasted the instructions across from the previous slide, so it's exactly the same thing, but except for a different margin. Again, you need to draw a diagram. It doesn't have to be 3D, it doesn't have to be too clever, but it does have to be really clearly annotated. So you get the sequence of the processes, you get all the processes and how they create and affect the features and the characteristics of a destructive plate margin. And if you can particularly pick out the subduction zone, the difference between the continental and the oceanic plates and how the oceanic one is heavier, and that's a key point. And also the, the other key thing about the destructive plate margin is the pressure involved and how that creates more violent earthquakes and more dis, uh, more destructive earthquakes and violent earthquakes and more violent uh, eruptions from the volcanoes.